Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, March 7, 2018. I am Yvesta Bowens with the details. With, tomor with tomorrow, March 8, being International Women's Day, President of the National Council of Women, Beverly Richards, is appealing to Vincentian women to continue to press for progress. Speaking to SVG TV News via a telephone interview today, Richards espoused the theme with the theme being sounded by the United Nations to press forward for change and gender, gender equity through action. She outlined that in a show of solidarity, four laps will be made around Capital Kingston beginning at 4.30 p.m. at Heritage Square to highlight four issues affecting women, namely domestic violence, rape and child molestation, sexual assault and harassment, and women's rights. With a call to action, let us press towards change, the removal of the scourge, the acceptable cultural norms that are adversely affecting our families, our individual lives, and our wider community on a whole. The time is now. Women must be empowered in all settings, and we must claim our rights and realize our full potential. Mm -hmm. Too long have we been treated as insignificant and trashed about. Women must be seen and heard from the grassroots level campaign up to the global movement. We want a more equal future. Richard said there are many challenges women and girls face worldwide. However, they must not succumb to the frustration and sell themselves short. We are saddened when women refuse to see the need to press for progress. We call on women to value themselves and hold on to their dignity, regardless to talk or sobbery remarks. After all, you have everything to lose when you give yourself away treatment. We applaud women for their tenacity, strength, determination to succeed and survive among the many challenges they face each day. Trafficking in persons, women and children, violence against women and children, domestic violence, incest, rape, exposure to and the scourge of HIV and AIDS, and other STDs, stigmatization in the workplace, unemployment, and vulnerability. Let us press for progress as we inculcate gender equality and equity in all citizens from childhood to adulthood. The Women's Council President further appealed to the entire Vincentian community to give support to tomorrow's event. Year old, five year old, six year old being raped and molested, sexually being molested. You have 11 year olds becoming impregnated. And so we thought that this scourge has been inculcated in our society and they are becoming the norm and acceptable. And we, this is unacceptable. Therefore, we are marching and we are inviting our women to come out and march. Maybe this has not affected you directly, but indirectly you are affected because it tells about the, it goes into the international news and these things are being heard about St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And so we want to cleanse St. Vincent. We want to cleanse our nation of this cause of this ugly head that has been raising in our society. This scourge of domestic violence and sexual assault against our women and children. Lawyer for the respondents, Anthony Astafan, has described the ongoing election petitions case as a waste of time. The senior counsel who was speaking on Boom FM recently said that the opposition New Democratic Party is blaming others for their loss at the polls and that their battle in the courts will be futile. I, I have always felt it's a matter for the judge to decide that these petitions are a complete waste of time. And I think your, your friend and my friend Stephen Joachim believes the same thing too. You can't keep changing your case going down the road, Bing. I, and, and look to the lawyers representing the government and the attorney general and the supervisor of election to blame us. There was no objections at the count, at the, at the vote. There was no objections at the preliminary count. There were no preprinted ballots, so Montgomery's case is out. Astafan said the real winner in the case will be the rule of law, as the courts is governed by it. The rule of law. 
actually cases over you can win out you can win a battle but you may lose the war until the war is over i have nothing to celebrate and i, I tell you uh, you know that i have very strong feelings about this matter and i will reserve what more i have to say about this matter until when the case is over you guys have been paid lump sums of monies in this matter and the longer it goes on you guys will continue to be paid a heck load of money from the taxpayers of this country who should i thank for that and in users of mr dr friday I th- i'll thank them for you if you want let them keep challenging it and moving on i'm very happy to say thank you dr friday keep going Take it to the Court of Appeal too, if you want. We'll be there. So you're grateful? Very grateful. <laughs> I wish they file another petition now, tomorrow. Even though out of time and hopeless. Uh, you have no conscience? Uh, you milking the... the you milking? I have. I'm not milking anything. Are Every you, you, action you, requires a reaction. The opposition New Democratic Party filed a petition case alleging discrepancies in the 2015 general elections. However, in the ruling to inspect the ballot boxes, Justice Henry dismissed the case and deemed the inspection an abuse of the court's process. MP for West Kingston, Daniel Cummins, has expressed concern that the ruling Unity Labour Party government is using projects as political gimmicks. Speaking on NICE Radio last night, Cummins said initially the opposition New Democratic Party realized that Port Kingston was deteriorating and needed serious remedial work. The West Kingston MP said that when the ULP came into office, they were delinquent for 14 years until a study carried out revealed that it was necessary to make certain adjustments to Port Kingston. Cummins said the government is now talking about relocating the port to Rose Place but have not consulted with the people. A project has been identified and funding made available. And this ULP government has not found it necessary to come to you to talk to you about what is being proposed and how this will impact on you and, and what this they're bringing forward to find alternative housing, etc., etc. Here you have a, ma- a major project of this kind for which funding is has been identified. There has been no dialogue with the people of Rose Place. There has been no, not even had information to tell the people, look, a project is coming here. There's been no attempt to speak with me as a representative of the area so that I can help to advise the people there of what is likely to happen. And then they put in a time frame of three years for doing this project. And we know that when ULP says three, you have to multiply that by five if you're really going to get any results. Cummins said there are some 100 residents at Rose Hall and called on the government to be serious about the people if any location, relocation should take place. I want to say to you that a new Democratic Party government will make sure that the necessary steps are taken to deal in the most humane manner with the people who have been living in those conditions for quite some time. I want to let you know that this ULP administration knows that no matter where the funding is coming from for that project, Issues of the relocation of people and alternative housing and so forth. Funding for that must come from the government itself as the agencies will not get involved in that. But it will be a conditioned precedent. In other words, the project will not be able to proceed unless and until the government deals with those people and deal with them effectively. So I'm sending a challenge out to the government, the so-called ULP government. If you're serious about developing port, then come and talk to the people of Rose Place and do it early. And don't come with any pipe dream. Don't come with any lies. Grenadine's residents who accumulated an arrears on their solid waste collection and disposal bill due to non-payment up to December 31st, 2017, would have the arrears wavered as a result of an accounting treatment arrangement undertaken by the Central Water and Sewerage Authority. 
The disclosure was made by CEO of the CWSA, Garth Saunders, as he gave remarks at a media conference earlier this week to announce a partnership with the St. Vincent Electricity Services, Vinlic, aimed at executing a sustainable solid waste management solution in the Grenadines. Saunders noted that the accounting treatment came after talks were held with residents to get their feedback on how the arrears issue can be resolved. So over the last year or so, CWSA has been working with most of the customers on, on the Grenadine Islands to try to reduce these balances and in, so, in most cases eliminate the balances because persons were refusing to pay the, the arrears because they did not know, they did not receive bills. In other words, no customer will be disconnected at any point in the future for non-payment of fees prior to 20. December 31st, 2017. Okay, so fr from here going forward, you will only be liable for disconnection for arrears that have built up from January 1st, 2018. That's all customers. So the issue of arrears being a deterrent or you know having some negative effect on your ability to pay will no longer be there from January 1st. The CWSA CEO stressed the importance of solid waste management on the small Grenadine Islands. In the Grenadines has a definite, has a finite life, right? The, the islands are small, so only so much can be done. So what we have to do is to move to a sustainable waste management solution, which extends the life of the landfills and puts the, the, the Grenadine Islands in a position where they can maintain the environment and still thrive in the tourism industry. So that is where we are today where we are partnering with Vinlec to create uh, a, a, an area of cooperation with the Grenadines residents. We are going to provide a top quality service. We are going to improve the service. We've started with, with um, um, white goods collections in the Grenadines. We are moving metals, plastics. So that's part of the sustainable solution. But we can only do that if we have a means of cost recovery. Also delivering remarks at Monday's media conference was CEO of Vinlec, Thornley Myers, who said he was pleased with the CWSA's move to address the issue in the Grenadines. So to us, Vinlec, that CWSA should do whatever is possible to ensure that those arrears are minimized before we get to a point where customers will be disconnected. I think we're quite satisfied with the decision taken by CWSA in that as of December the 31st, 2017, no customer would have a raise um, that will necessitate them to be disconnected uh, for electricity. We also are convinced from our discussions with CWSA that this whole exercise is not one aimed at simply disconnecting customers. It's one aimed at building efficiency within a state-owned enterprise. Um, to ensure that the service that is, is, is delivered, the quality of the service delivered, could be kept at a standard satisfactory to all parties. A group of local artisans are making a difference in the society by keeping the marine environment clean and using the garbage collected to create art. The art created is being showcased at an exhibition launched earlier today by the One Drop in the Ocean movement. As we hear in this report from Nikita Tony, the exhibition also seeks to encourage persons to get more involved in protecting and preserving the marine environment. Aiming to raise awareness on the importance of keeping the marine environment clean, the One Drop in the Ocean movement will from today, Wednesday, March 7th to Thursday, March 15th, host an exhibition at the Old Public Library to showcase artwork made from debris collected on beaches here in SVG. Speaking with our news team at today's official opening ceremony, Coordinator Nadia Huggins said the One Drop in the Ocean movement is simply a group of concerned citizens striving to make a difference in the protection 
and preservation of the environment. This project is actually the brainchild of Raven Hofflin, um, and the both of us decided to collaborate together because um, we, you know, we both swim a lot and we've been seeing a lot of debris wash up on the beaches, and we wanted to try and figure out how to get this message out to people. And I think the most compelling way to do this is through art. This is how we got everybody involved. We just reached out to a few people and said, if, asked them if they were interested, and everybody came on board. And this is what happened as a result of it. Expressing gratitude for the support given to the movement, Huggins gave an overview of the work featured at the exhibition. We are throwing into the rivers things that are washing up on our shores. Um, we've been collecting a lot of different materials from just hosting a bunch of beach cleanups. We've done cleanups in Argyle and Connery, um, some in Mustique, and we've just been collecting a lot of debris. And we have about 21 artists involved, local artists who are working in fashion, painting, sculpture, photography, and they've been making different types of statements out of this trash. Um, if you look around, you'll see uh, people have been utilizing a lot of the material to drive the message home that we can no longer ignore this problem. Huggins for the urge of incension public to come out and support the timely initiative. Um, at the end of the day, this is a, a tourism product we're trying to sell um, to outsiders and we need to figure out how we're going to actually sustain life and the environment. It's going to be on from March 7th until the 15th and it's open daily from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. It's open for half day on Saturday so if you have kids you want to bring in, come and check it out. That's a perfect day. And on the last day, on the 15th, it's open until 6. We're open for an extra hour. The one drop in the Ocean Movement would like to encourage all Vincentians to get on board and do their part in protecting and preserving this country's marine environment. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. The Greg's Heritage Festival will be presenting on March 14th this year an authentic representation on the life of Vincentian ancestors. That's according to Chief Representative of the Greg's Garifuna Council, John Nero, as he spoke with SVG TV News on activities slated for National Heroes Day this year in the Greg's community. Nero said this year's festival will be highlighting five unique dimensions of Vincentian heritage. It's a multidimensional process of transformation where we feature five particular dimensions of heritage. So there's a hot building which responds to the basic human need of shelter. There is local and traditional cuisine that responds to the basic human need of food. And then this year we want to introduce costume which responds to the basic human need of clothing. The two other dimensions are basketry slash handicraft. This responds to livelihood needs, income generation and wealth creation. And we put beadwork in its own category because there's a, it's also livelihood, but there's a spiritual aspect to beads. We know, of course, that the Roman Catholic Church uses the rosary, and Muslims usually use a bead as well, but the beads originate in indigenous culture, and they are very deep significance. Nero added that persons can expect to see nine indigenous huts, along with a best hut competition, adding that the structures will highlight the life of our ancestors both in the near and distant past. We hope to have a best hut competition. And there are two particular huts that are staples that have to be constructed every year. There is the Kayo design, which mimics those that were built out of Argyle at the indigenous site. And the Kayo hut represents the ancient past. Then we do a Watland Dab, which represents the recent past. So our festival has to have these different dimensions to it, that when you come, you actually have a sensory experience, taste, touch, smell, sight, hearing, all the senses that will be engaged at our festival. What we refuse to do is to mimic or to duplicate Soka Monarch, because the jump and wave type of celebration of heritage belongs to the heritage of Carnival. But when you celebrate in your indigenous heritage, then you must be able to, do, to represent or represent those things that were actually part of our ancestors' daily life and life. 
Nero further stated that efforts have been made to ensure that the festival is a true representation of Vincentian heritage. As to what our expectations are, our mantra, because we don't use the word motto necessarily, our mantra is concept over crowd. We don't believe in attracting a large crowd to an event that doesn't have the substance to, to sustain the crowd. So we emphasize building on the idea, valuing the nature and the essence of heritage. And then, you know, there's, you know that saying, if you build it, they will come. That's basically what we want to represent in our festival. Put energy and emphasis in creating something of substance, and then the crowd is secondary. Although the crowd will bring the money, but you don't put the money for us. The student council of the Owe Government School today hosted a career day which saw the participation of all students and their teachers. This is the second time the school is hosting the career fair, which according to the principal Natasha Lavier, is a way of exposing the students at a young age to different career fields. So that even though they are at primary school and it's a long way off from choosing a career, they'll have a lot of ideas as to what the careers really entail so that they can make a strong decision when the time is right. I'm very happy that the parents this time around, they um, organize the students to get their uniforms, their career wear together. So about 95% of the school was truly dressed in the career wear. So I'm very happy and when we march to the village, the persons, persons were very happy to come out and see the students all dressed up. So I'm happy that and we will do it another time again. Two of the guest speakers at today's fair encouraged the students to dream big and to work hard to achieve success. Dream bigger, carry your dreams outside of Oya, outside of Kingston, outside of St. Vincent. It doesn't matter who you are or your background, that doesn't define who you are. You can achieve anything you put your mind to as long as you believe in yourself. Alright? So that's my word of encouragement to you today. Believe in yourself. Say, say it with me. I believe in me. Say it together. I believe in me. All right, and work towards your dream. As Miss Batiste say, you already set your goal, your career goal that is. You need to walk towards achieving it. Don't just say you want to be a police or a doctor. Sit back in class and don't do no work. If the teacher does not give you any homework for the day, you must take it upon yourself. When you reach home, find some kind of book work to do. Read, revise, that would help you achieve. Some of the students and their parents were excited about the occasion and shared with our news team a bit about their choice of wear for the career fair. I fix pipe and pay people their water bill. Yes. Why do you want to be a nurse? Because I want to help the people in my community. Lawyer, tell us why you want to be a lawyer. I want to fight crime. I'm taking care of the patient on the operation table and I want to help the sick feel better. Captain? Okay, why? Come on, transport people. I want to be a patriotic surgeon to help children and babies. Well, I'm feeling very good. And I know the parents are feeling real happy about themselves, just in their children, in their outfit. Especially to see my son choosing a career that he will want to pursue later on in the future. It was a very good day seeing all these children and parents go all out to make sure they have their uniforms made. It was a very wonderful day. Um, my daughter's name is Leonie Lorraine. Uh, and I am so proud that this morning she's just to be a doctor. And I know that is her aim. And my desire is to help push her to achieve her goals. I feel overjoyed this morning to see all the children. My granddaughter, and I feel proud of she this morning, how she looks. She says she wants to be a doctor, always want to be a doctor, to tend to the sick, old and young. So I'm proud of she today, and I'm proud, really, really proud. So, okay, and I encourage her a lot. Police here are investigating the circumstances surrounding the sudden death of Zilva Charles, a 50-year-old vendor of diamond. Reports are that between the hours of 12 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 6, Charles died suddenly at her home at Diamond. Charles was pronounced dead at the scene by the district medical officer, Dr. Michael Goodluck. 
The police said it was reported that no foul play was suspected. A post-mortem examination is to be carried out on the body to determine the cause of death. The police are also investigating the circumstances surrounding a robbery which occurred at Vermont on Monday, March 5th, involving Shane Ryan, a 21-year-old storeroom clerk of Vermont. According to the police, on Tuesday, March 6th, Ryan reported against an unknown masked man who, being armed with a gun, robbed him of one gold blue Energy X2 touchscreen cellular phone valued at EC $540 and EC $10 in cash.